Aloha Ecamm fam. Good morning. Welcome to the Ecamm live demo. Sorry, my phone just decided to start ringing and it's spammers. Like, why, why do they bother? <laughs> just kind of funny. Anyway, glad everyone's here. I am Doc Rock, your community manager for Ecamm. I will be running you through some settings today, showing you all of the cool things. If you have questions, guys, what we're going to want you to do is to put a Q colon in front of your question because it makes it easier for me to find you later. You'll see. I'll show you why. It's kind of a cool thing. You should should kind of run that too with your people. And then don't forget if you come by and you're watching this on the replay, just leave your questions there too. We'll still come back and try to get you an answer. You can always email us marketing at ecam.com or find support at supportdesk at ecam.com. But today we're going to run through some settings real quick. Let me say what's cracking to the fam real quick. Mr. Camera Junkie is here. Good to see you. And whoa, um, dang it. Why do I do that every time? Hold on. So I have this really cool mouse, which I absolutely love. The problem is... If you spin the scroll wheel in one window and then move it to another window, it will remember that you spun the scroll wheel and just go crazy. So, sorry about that, Chief. Give me one second. We're going to go and make a couple minor changes as we say hello to Obs. What's up, Mrs. Obs? Good to see you here. Somewhere cruising in her golf cart and having a sweet tea, enjoying the party. And we have Miss, uh, let's see, Naya. Let's make sure I said that right. If I said it wrong, you can slap me. Uh, welcome to the party. Mr. Paul is here. Rich is driving. Hey, Rich. Good to see you, boss. And dun, 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 Mr. Kevin is here. And Glenda is here. And hey, Brian. Good to see you, boss. Okay. So let's dive in. Again, folks, if you come up and you have any questions, of course, you can always just drop them in the chat. I'm going to do one last thing. Make a little copy of this and send this over to here. And then boom. Okay, so as you know, Ecamm Live is our, I guess everyone just thinks of it as the live streaming software. But we also are more of a live production suite, right? One of the, you know, myriad things that people do is do their pre-recorded videos, set up for their webinars, um, plan their content in such a way. Um, you can also just use our virtual camera to just make your Zoom meetings and other things where you would use your standard Mac built-in camera just look way better. Um, because as you know, the camera that's built into most machines is a little bit weird. So we can do that as well. And then I'll show you how we do all of those myriad things today. Okay, cool. Let's uh, let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is press on to on my keyboard. I hit Command Shift D and that gives you a look at my back screen. This is exactly what Ecamm looks like. Well, not exactly. This is what my Ecamm looks like. Yours could look like this. You will arrange it according to your preferences. Oh, okay. Naja. Okay, that's even better. That's easier. <laughs> uh, I like it. That's a cool name. So this, I, I arranged mine this particular way because I'm a weirdo and I like things like extremely perfect. I am kind of weird like that. Um, even like right now, my content window is longer than I normally make it. And that drives me crazy. So I'll move it up just so that I can make it even here. Don't ask me why I'm just a weirdo like that. So that's what it do. Why you going brother B way going. So what, what you'll see here, this is my scenes window. We'll talk about that. We'll dive into overlays. This is my master feed. This is sort of where you set everything up. Call this my production studio. This preview window is what you guys see with the rest of the world coming backwards. This is my camera effects. This is my interview, my comments. Now, most of you guys, when you first get your Ecamm fired up, your comments window is going to look something like this. I mean, I can see that boy. I am blind, so I have to make mine gigantic. All you need to do is just pull it out a little bit so you can see better. And then this is your sound effects panel. And this is where I adjust everything for my microphone, my sound levels, and things like that. I did something crazy yesterday. 
<laughs> and um, I'm going to have to put it back. I rotated my mic yoke so that I could put the XLR on the opposite side and it doesn't fit my mount right. So I have to like talk crooked <laughs> for the rest of the day until I go around and fix it. Or I'll just crank the level up a little bit. It was really dumb. The funny thing is if you have an SM7B, you know, taking the yoke off is easy. Putting it back on is a little bit more of a challenge because you have to make sure the washers are perfectly seated. And yeah, it was stupid. I should have left it the way it was, but hey, there you go. <laughs> so Aubrey is saying um, hello. Thank you, Aubrey. I appreciate you for welcoming in the family. And then, yes, sure, exactly, Kevin. Make sure everyone hits the like button. Okay, cool. So what happens here is um, this is our scenes window. Think of this. I like to, I like to explain this to everyone as like a play. You will adjust myriad things in your scenes accordingly. Like, for instance, if I had a guest, I would pull a screen like this and my guest would be here, right? If I wanted to do a, a two screen situation with my guest, oh, I don't have the video loaded. Sorry about that. Let's see. Um, I could do something like create a new scene here, put up a camera, put myself in this particular corner. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And then I could just option drag down and then there would be my second window. And then in my second window, I could select my guests. And then over here I could put graphics or a PDF or something of the nature. Let me grab a PDF just to show you what I mean. If I come over here and lean back the head, yeah, the head leans back because again, I just told you guys I was blind. You guys probably don't believe me, but I can see like one of those uh, moles and you know, need the glasses. Uh, Mr. Magoo. That's what they used to call me when I was a little kid. Where the heck is I see? Man, you know what's funny? When you're looking for a PDF, you can't find a PDF. Here's a PDF. I'll just drag one over here, scale it a little bit. And so, like, say myself and my guests would be here trying to talk about this PDF, right? So this is basically how we would do it. And then I can hit the pages, change pages, and explain things on this PDF just like how you do it. You know what I mean? It's it's really simple setup. Just think of scenes again as your play, right? You're going to set your intro. You're going to set maybe your countdown, then your intro, then your where you're going to say hello. Present by yourself. Present with your guests. Show your slides. Show your websites. Display your program, whatever you're into. And then maybe you'll have a you know, reminder to come and watch this thing coming up soon. And then maybe you'll have another screen to get out. Right. That's basically how you're going to do it. So, again, I'll do a quick one just to show you because, hey, this is what we're here for. I will select the new scene that I just created. I'll delete this. Come here. Delete that and delete this and then take this me and move me out of the way and say, OK, we're going to build a promo screen for a class that I don't know we have coming up on Wednesday on uh, YouTube dot com slash ecamm so if you want to learn about microphones and three different levels of microphones using products from irig make sure you lock it in your calendar for this exact same time on wednesday because exactly what we'll be doing so <laughs> there i just showed you how to make a promo scene on the fly because well i just thought of it <laughs> so that's i mean it's literally that easy gang what i did actually I'll, I'll show you again something real quick what i did was i just dragged that image in because I have the image on my computer. But let's say you're, you're not a drag person. Click this uh, little thing. It will pop up. It will show you stuff. Like I can show you my desktop background screen. as a joke. <laughs> if you watch the video that I put out today, you will see that. And then you'll be like, what? Okay, that's funny, Doc. Okay, so I would just come over here. I'll click on my downloads folder where I had that file. And here is the promo and then it lands in the middle. I scroll my mouse wheel up and it's perfect fit. It's good to go. Let's do that again. Let's make a different promo. I'll click the, the image sign. This is my overlay tab right here. I'm clicking on the plus to show how to load an image and then I'll press open and then boom. This is the video that's running on the channel right now. So, so you could just build a promo on the fly just super quick 
Um, yeah, scenes are it. Scene is life. It's just literally where you are. <laughs> so it is what it is. Um, and then let's go to the next one here is our overlay. Since we're kind of doing that now, we'll start again with another blank scene just so you can see how we build overlays. So I showed you here by pressing this icon. This is where we would go to get an image. Okay. We're going to go ahead and pop that out of the way. If I click this one. Come on. This is where I would go if I wanted to select a movie or something of that nature that is going to be used as an animated overlay, right? So if I go over here, actually, I'll drag one in because it's I already have these sitting around, so it's easier. I'll just drag one to here and press open, and then it, it the question comes up, do I want to add this as an animated overlay or full screen with audio in my particular case i want an animated overlay and then my little movie film pops up i can adjust it accordingly so if even if i have my camera on this overlay is here when i press this it basically allows me to place this anywhere i want so this gives me a little bit more flexibility now the problem, which you may, the people who know, know, I'll show you guys real quick. You guys don't hear anything when that plays. And you kind of wanted to hear stuff. You kind of wanted to have, you know, a certain to it. So let's drag it again. And now it makes noise. Because in this particular case, I'm using what's known as a WebM format. And what the WebM format does is it allows it to have not only the transparency to make the really cool overlay, it allows it to also play the sound. But we'll move that because every time we come back to the scene, it will play and drive all of us batty. So that is one particular way to do it. This is the same thing. I just recreated it in a different colorway. And then, you know, again, that's the WebM format allows me to keep both the transparency and let it have a little bit of, you know, kind of noise. Yeah, I make weird noises. Everyone new here, you'll find out soon. What's up, Mr. Michael? Good to see you here. He says evening. That's funny because it's UK, I guess, because it's uh, 8 a.m. in Honolulu. <laughs> okay, so let's diving in. Hey, good to see you here, Sherelle. Thank you for coming through. Welcome to the party. All right, so the next, so that covers the picture and the overlay. Now, this is the next one. This is my favorite. This is where things get nuts. Check this out. We're going to press on the old text, the Rooney here, and I'll type in my rec requisite statement. You guys all know me. This is what I always type. I'm going to use white for now just to make it easier. And then I have a little assortment of my favorite streaming type fonts. So I'll select this and then I'll just press the button and then boom, there is my text, right? So I can just pop my little text over here and call that a win. Okay. Hey, oh, now, ooh. On the hill, you came at the exact right time on the hill because I'm about to show you, <laughs> I'm about to show people your stuff, but let's take a pause for the cause. Let me go over here to ecam.tv slash shows. <laughs> uh, I always type this wrong. And we're going to go over here to ecam.tv slash shows because if you go on to our page and then you look at building blocks channel on YouTube, you will find out that what I'm going to show you, the full tutorials will exist on the building blocks channel. So I just, uh, on the hill, you can share that link in the thing because you have been moderated. So it would be quite appreciative of you if you could do that. Okay, cool. So gang, let, let's explain what we're talking about. So you saw me here. I just added this little Aloha and it's cool, but you know, it's on a thin letters, kind of hard to see. And I want to give it a little bit of extra genesis quoi. Okay. So I'm just going to make a duplicate. I'm going to press this again and then I'm going to go to my background and let's see, let's use a nice background here. We're going to pick orange. Why did you not select my crayon? Okay. We're going to select orange. We're going to select the text, also select orange, and then 
I'm going to take the opacity of said text and bring it down to nay about nothing. And then I'm going to say add. Okay, so I get this little box. I'm going to grab the box, give it a little size, you know, something of that nature. Then, oh, put the other one on top. Sorry. Bam. There we go. And then, man, why is my aloha on the bottom? There we go. See, I should have just let Anna do this because it's cooler. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is create a folder, and I'm going to stick this aloha in it, and then I'm going to stick this background in it, and then I'm going to say, click on the pencil here, and then say, I want this guy to fly in from the left, and I'll say, okay, and then I'll select on this guy, click the pencil, and I'll say, I want this guy to fly in from the right, and then select okay, and then when I turn this off, when I turn it on, It'll do, yo, look at that. Isn't that so cool? Like, if you really want to learn how to do this and learn how to do it way better than Doc because I'm just lazy. I just use Final Cut because I can. <laughs> um, you can learn how to do some pretty incredible things with this. I just, yo, I'm always floored at what they managed to pull off on and full gens using the building blocks set up, you know, doing all the cool things with just text boxes alone, but you can get pretty handy and swanky with it and just make cool things. So you can do cool things with our text boxes. Again, if you want to learn more, we will get the link popped in for you. Uh, Anna is here. Please put in the URL to your building blocks channel and it will let you do it because you have been moderated. Okay, cool. So that's text boxes in general. I'll show you some other cool stuff you can do with tech box, text boxes. Um, again, we have fly in from the right, fly in from the left. The next one I'll show you is scrolling ticker. And we will go and grab a large block of text. Let's just say we want to pull this off. Dun, 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 dun. Scrolly, scrolly, scrolly. And we're going to select this text right here. And I'm going to pop it in there. What's up, Howie? Good to see you here, boss. And I'll press this. And then now it's in a large spot here. I'm going to move it down to the bottom. And then I will 86 this box right here. And then just so it's not, you know, so hugeified, I will pick a slightly smaller text and then pop my background on. And then you can go like that. And then so now you have a cool little, you know, place to put your scrolling text. Now, me personally, I don't like it when the text goes all the way to the edge. So I came up with another crazy idea. Take your text box here, right? And then just make it smaller. So they're almost the same size. Like such. And then go like this and then stick it on the top. And then I'll make this a little skinnier. Ooh, not that skinny. Like that. And then I'll put it here. Because I I just I like it to come off the edge a little piece. Don't ask me why. Call me weird. I'm just like that. Right? And then it disappears a little bit faster. You can hold the option key. Drag it to the other side to make the text come out in the middle. So then your text just doesn't go to the end. I don't know why. I'm just a weirdo. That's how I like to do it. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. Yeah, you guys know I'm weird. <laughs> so to me, that just looks better. But you'll see the little bit of ligatures lick out the bottom. So you just adjust accordingly. But you see there is a, a turtle and a ribbit. So you can control the speed. If you don't have everyone who's a speed readers, you can put it over here. And then it scrolls nice and slow. If you want to make it scroll fast, you can crank it up there. And it's like, keep up, people. Read quicker. <laughs> so you can adjust the scrolling ticker just like that. And it is simple. Okay. Um, Yana, I'll show you real quick how I made the box. But if you see that link that's right above you, this link right here, they got all the tutorials on how to get gangster with the text boxes, but I'll show you real quick. Um, but yeah, follow this link right here that Anna put in. And right now she's 
officially unofficial Anna, but she's she's the bomb. They her and Fulgens, they teach how to do this stuff like always. Oh, I see. Now you're gonna be building blocks. <laughs> okay, let me show you real quick, yeah, uh Jan, how I do it. This is cool. All right, so you come over to the text box guy and you click text box. Okay, I'll make a humongous one just because. And then maybe I'll set the margins to like extra stupid. And then I'll set the, the uh, what you call it, to like roundy round round. Then all you do is take the text that would go in requisite box and turn the opacity to that text down to nothing. Because then it's opaced. And now you got an empty box. And with said empty box, you could do other cool, fancy, swanky type things. Let me show you this. I'm going to hit Command Shift B, which makes the camera go night night. And I'm looking at a blank screen. Then I'll click, click. I'll pick on this guy, and then I will come in here and change this guy to custom. And then I will over laser it on top of said box, and then give it a little tuck like that. And then bam, you have a frame for your picture graph in a nice little box. Come over here. You click on the folder. Stick in the camera, stick in the box, and then now wherever you, you know, turn this folder off, it's, oh, hold on, eyeball. See, now your camera is set up like that. So, yeah, that's how you do it. It's really, really cool. It's very cool. And to do one other thing, just to make the box camera set up a little more swanky, I will click on the box, hold the option drag. I'll take this one. Pencilate it, turn off the corner radios, take the blue, the uh, what you call this color, orange, and then I don't know, give it a little different, come like that, and then put it back in here accordingly. But I'm going to shrinkify it, right? And then move this over and then shrinkify it a little bit more, and then that way. I could have a little bit of extra lines. Oh, I'm moving my camera. I want to move the box. So, yeah, now you can have a little bit of extra lines with your box and, you know, give it some juice. So, yeah, you can get creative. You can get creative if you wish. It's kind of a cool thing. We kind of like it. It's fun. So that's your text box. The next one would be the clock uh, let's see, we want to set our clock opacity not to zero anymore because we want to see the numbers. And then I'll select white, and then I will corner radiate my clock just a pigeon, and then pull back the margin just a taste, and then I'll go ahead and press countdown. So what's happening now is I have a countdown timer. See, let me uh, turn off this guy here. You out of there. See, on, off. Okay, so now I have a clock. Cool things you can do with the clock. Let's show you. I can click on this guy and say, I want this to count down for an, an, appro a pro yeah, for an amount of time. I can make it count down to a date and time, like how many days until Christmas. I can make it just be a standard issue clock, right? So you guys can know that it's 826 a.m. in the Hana of Lulu, right? I can also come down here and make it a stopwatch, right? And then so you pause, reset, and then be like, on your march, get set, go. So you can do that. That's kind of cool. Really handy if you're doing any type of trivia or something of that nature. What's up, Alex? Good to see you here. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> Jan Rick wrote the community. That's funny. That's super funny. Uh, you guys know you cannot have fun when <laughs> when I'm trying to do this because I get I get ADD like sidetracked super quick. You guys can behave, okay? <laughs> uh, yes. So uh, you can do something like reset. Like how fast is my mouse? Oh, one sec. No, it's not. Man, I'm quicker than that. Let's do that again. This thing lies. That's pure lies. Dang. There you go. Mm, sub one second mouse clicks. The gamer kids will probably just wreck shop with that. Anyway, cool things you could do with the clock. 
Now, one more that I like to do, as a matter of fact, most of us e-camera type folks like to do, come over here, take this guy, pop in zero, zero. I'll take this guy and I'll set it for 10. Okay. What I'm going to tell it now is I want you to go to the next scene when you're done. This is how we do the swanky countdowns, right? So actually for this particular example, I'm going to turn off auto start because when I go to remove it later, it will drive me batty. Okay. So I'm going to take, make one next scene over here. And then we're going to say, this is, Oh, don't do that. Open the text. Okay. We're going to call this next scene. All right. We're going to crank this up here and just embiggen that drop this in the middle, put on the camera. All right, cool. So now, you know, this is my next scene. I don't know if you guys see this. There's these little blue crosshairs that come alive to let you know that, you know, you're, you're finding your spots. Okay. So we're going to click this guy right here and then go play. And it would do the countdown 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Sorry. I was having a method man issue and ready. Get ready. Next scene. Woo. See, you can do automatic scene changes on the fly. Now let's just say I like that, but I don't want no big gigantic, stupid blue clock in the middle of my life while I'm doing this. No problem. Hold your horses. We come over here. I mean, I'm again, I'm going to leave all. Normally you would have auto start on. I'm going to leave it off to make it easier for us to work. Turn off the background, take the opacity of the text, turn it to next to nothing and then go. And then, oh yeah, it's not counting, but I'll click play. And then we just wait. Hmm. I can wait. Hello, Jerry. You're calling number six. We'll be right with you. We're calling number six, Jimmy. Okay, I just messed that joke up. But anyway, that's how you can do an automatic scene change that nobody can see. But as you can see, it's actually here. It's just hidden. It's just hidden from the people because, you know, they don't need to know when you're trying to do your scene change. So there you go. That's another cool thing you can do with the clock. You can do so many cool things with the clock. We absolutely love it. Now, here we go. I'm going to turn on this guy right here. This guy is a widget. A widget is when I open up this little globe and I paste in a link like such, and then I say, add the widget overlay. Let me type this numbers one, two, eight, zero space. Uh, da, 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 da. What is it? 1280 by 960. And then press add widget overlay. It's going to make me a widget overlay and my overlay pops up over here. Right? So it's like, okay, that's cool. But what are you going to do with that overlay? Well, I'm going to show you. Give me two seconds. I should have opened this link ahead of time, but Hey, I'm doc. Not exactly brilliant. Just smart. <laughs> <laughs> countdown timer, but make it a ghost. That's the answer. That is the answer. What's up, Mr. FJ? I hope you're wearing your melon hat today. I believe mine is in the mailbox waiting for the mailman. Well, it's in the mail truck waiting for the mailman to bring it to the mailbox. I don't know why, but every time Sylvia and Andrew send me stuff, it takes forever. <laughs> because I don't know, my mail people hate me. I'm not sure what's going on. Here we go. All right. So we're almost at it. I'm almost there. I just got to press this button right here and you'll see what happens when this, your, say your widget works. I'll send the test. And then I don't know, this test normally takes a couple of seconds. One other thing I'll do is I'll change the color, but I'm showing you my hands are over here. I'm not doing anything. It's automatically going to update by itself. It just updated. And then the test is still sending. For who knows whatever reason it's taking forever but it's the internet so as happens all right cool so the, in a second you'll see what that does web widgets are cool because it can help you add some interactivity to your program to your broadcast and things like that and it's just lovely lovely delicious helpful and people will it kind of like triggers other people to interact when they see it interact and and not know why it's hiding, but it should be here, but it's there. Oh, there it is. It was just too tall. That's what I did. But you see, it brings up the little guy in the middle. There it is. That's an interactive widget from the web widgets. There's lots of place to get them. My favorite source right now is probably Nerd or Die. 
Um, there's okay. Enough with that. <laughs> there's a nerd or die. There's uh, O W three or O W N three D, aka owned gamer people. What can you do? Uh, stream labs, stream elements. There's lots of places to get with this. You can make your own, and our very own Bradley Vincent teaches you on his um, tutorials. Which is it on this page? I am on ecam lives ecam dot club shows no i don't see bradley on this page but it's there if you go to replays on this page you can find it let me show you guys the page i'm talking about because right now i'm talking on the side of my face if you go to ecam.club slash shows you can get access to all of our shows and then if you come over onto the very very bottom you'll see there is a play button takes you to the YouTube page and you'll find tutorials from Bradley that teaches you how to do all of that fancy dancey stuff. Okay. Let's turn this off before somebody subscribes to the channel and the thing starts freaking out. Let me check to see if we have any questions. Uh, hey, yes. PTV, you know, it's always the doc isms. <laughs> That's I just say random words. My mama dropped me on my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> cool. Da, 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 da. Let's see. <laughs> I'm laughing at Fulgens. Yes, nerdordie.com has some really, really cool ones out there. And yes, they do have free ones. That's the other part that's cool. I just downloaded a really cool pack from Nerd or Die that I'm hoping you're going to have time to mess with this weekend. But I just thought it was kind of pretty so I downloaded it. It's a little like 80s nerd type situation. But let me come over here and press this. Ta -da! And then I wanted it because they updated their, they want, I, I wanted it because they updated the uh, alerts. And so I can do cool alerts like this. And then so this is going to be my thing to mess with this weekend to get these guys working. Because on, on my show, I use these kind of like, you know, circa 80s old people colors. Sorry. Michael says, uh, um, yeah, there if you if you get yourself a, a Mac and then put parallels in it so you can still use Windows, then you can use Ecamm. <laughs> but no, I d I don't think we ever want to be in that i shouldn't say ever because you never know what happens but i don't think we want to play back in that park i have been a bihexual user my whole entire life i have two lenovos and every day that i have to use them i feel like punching myself in the face because they're a pain in the butt <laughs> but yeah sorry i'm an ex-apple guy I'm, I'm i'm biased i worked at apple back in the day i just realized with that text hack you can also create a custom colored background in the pinch. Yes, sir. You can make a huge Magnus colored background just by making a text box and making it huge Magnus. And then that would cover it. Oh, one thing that we didn't talk about while we're here since Yan bring it up. Uh, if I click back over to my custom, me personally, gang, when I do my scenes, I like to start with blank and that's command shift V on the keyboard. It basically turns everything off. You have the ability to load like background. So in this overlay panel here, I have three levels showing the background, my standard overlays showing all scenes, anything you put in showing all scenes, when you change scenes, that will always be there. Anything you put in the current scene will only stick to this scene. And then things that you put in the background will shine through. So just to give you some more examples, you can do a cool branded type thing like this. You can be out in the middle of the desert, like such, you can actually play an animated movie in the background that's not playing. I don't know why. Oh, maybe I moved the movie. There we go. There's a movie. So there's a movie that's playing in the background. And then all I have to do now is add a camera because right now you guys are talking to a weirdo. And then I come over here and roundify said camera. No, wrong button. Roundify said camera. And then put the melon in the middle. And then zoom -erate it and then go like that and then give it a little bit more zoom -eration, and then boom. Now you have a cool looking scene with animated. It's moving. It lets people know that this thing is live because if it wasn't live, it doesn't spin. You know, things like that. Uh, come over here. Drop my clock in. 
is quick. This guy, I don't need a background. Ten minutes is good. Say 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 hey hey hey. Move this clock over here. Drop it in an area like such, and then we are ready to start the show in just a minute. It's, 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 it's very cool. The background matches my mic. Ta-da! So that's some of the cool stuff you can do. Um, uh, your color dropper, if you go like such, uh, here, you know what? I'll make a new text box so as not to mess up my text box. So check this out. I will new text box and I will do the uh, background thing on and then I'll margerate it. And then I'll click on this. Here's my secret. You ready, Yen? Take the color picker and select from the preview window. Oh, I didn't press background. Ding dong. Come over here. Select from the preview window. And I can get the color purple. Sorry, Oprah. You see? Now I have the exact color. You can't even tell when it's there. It's kind of like, you know, nice and floaty. Right. The other thing I could do if I want to make this sort of match the theme, pick up this little picker, come over here and nail the blue. Ugh. Oh, that's the text. Dang it. Come on, Doc. Focus, Daniel son. OK, pick this up and then get it into the blue. And then now it matches the party a little bit better. Right. So now if I come over here and say. Like such. Dun -dun. And then I'll do this again because I was in the middle of typing and I realized I can't type. Boom. There you go. So you can do something cool like that. Yes. Um, If your preview window may not absolutely show up if you're not live because it's, it's weird. It depends on your platform. All you do is go live to yourself in an unlisted thing just to help you find a way to peel that color out. Um, also, Mr. Yen, check this out. When you go to the color picker, like such, this thing down here, you can, it's supposed to let you grab things from anywhere. So I can go pull, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me show you what I mean. This is going to get confusing because I was confusing myself in the middle of saying it. And that's just certain levels of stupidity. Okay, so I'm going to take this guy, and I want to pick the pink from Ian's um, poster. Now, you guys are going to see my mouse disappear, but Ian is on my 34-inch LG over here to the right. So when I click on background on, and I click this color clicker, my color picker, because it's a system-wide tool, I am actually over here in the Ian Anderson gray section, and then I will pick on this pink, and you see I picked up the Ian Anderson pink just because I pulled it from the thumbnail, which was down here. So you could also, Jan, if the preview window doesn't open, have the video open in QuickTime somewhere else on your monitor, and you can scoop see it from over there, right? Like I might want to scoop a little Big Sur, copyright Apple, come over here, Make sure that you're selected on the background first, right? Click this and come and grab this, the color purple from Copyright Apple, or that's not background, dummy. Man, my fingers is not working today. I come over here and pick it from right off the desktop, stolen directly from Apple. Sorry, Tim, don't be mad, you know? So you can get the colors from basically anything that's on your screen. So, um, yeah, I, I use my colors. I built my whole palette. Uh, why can't I type today? Whoever said just today, you're fired. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. I build my palette with this uh, website here called colors.co. And then give it a little spiralation. Come over here, select on my name. And then it's going to show my palette. This is my palette that you guys all know and love. Because you guys see me all the time. I can say open, uh, view the palette. And it has all my colors like that. What I did, mine is a little messy, but I've taken each one of these individual chicle, if you will, and I put them in my color picker. So if I come back over here and make a new text box one more again, and then I click on the background, and come on, color picker, where did you go? 
is hiding back there. Yeah, this is a preference situation. Let me fix this real quick. I have it set up in preferences that whenever screen share is on to put things in the back so it makes it easier to find your, you mean, get access to your overlays. Okay, so you'll see that gradient that you just see right there. I actually have it loaded here because what you can do is you can save things to the palette, right? So let's say I wanted to steal a color out of Fulgen's background, right? Because, you know, he's Fulgen's. So let's steal this color right here. Once I have it, I can pick this little cheek lay up and drag it into the area and then I can keep it so I can use it again and I don't have to go hunting. You know what I mean? So like I have all of my stuff in here adjusted accordingly and you can make changes. You can give yourself rows on top of rows of where you want to put stuff. You know what I mean? It's just going to tack it to the end. If you want to delete one, you can delete one. You can delete one. So don't forget, once you find your colors, just keep it in the picker so you don't have to go digging for it every time because that'll get old. Real, why are there two of me? Get out of here, Doc. Oh, yeah, that'll just drive you crazy. Okay, what I did, I'll put video monitor, select my external screen work. Yep, there you go. <laughs> there you go. That's cheating, but it works. Yeah, yeah it's very cool. Yeah, I love I, the color picker, by the way, gang, system-wide. So if you're working in like preview or Photoshop or... I don't know, mama's cookie recipe program. And they have a place where you would select the color. You can make changes to the color picker in there. Cause you might say, Oh, this picture, this picture that's in this app. I really like that color. You should be able to access the color picker from round about any Mac program, except Netflix. Anyway, so that covers the overlay panel quite quickly. There's a lot in there, but this is sort of your master window. This is where the world rocks. Next, we have our sound levels panel. This is where I adjust my microphone levels. You'll see here, I have my overhead camera. It has a mic on it because it's an iPhone. So I can adjust levels for that. This allows me to select levels for movies. So if I have a movie that plays a sound and I want to be able to adjust the level on said movie, I can do that. And so if I were to play, why the, why the, the hive podcast? Um, this I, is my level of changes for the movie. So I can adjust media. the volumes I, you know, accordingly. Off, I wanted to keep the branding okay. the same. Go but with Jared. Don't need to talk to Jared. And there's my sound effects. Sound effects is where I have all the cool things like play some music. So if I press the H key, it starts to play music because there's a tiny, you can't see this. I know there's a tiny little H over here. Um, because if you press this little gear box, you can make this any letter you want. So if I press the H key again, then the lady stops singing, press it again, and the lady starts singing. So there's that. And then if you press on Shelly Saves the Day, her comment shows up on screen. You can say, hey, Shelly, hey. Or as we say in my neighborhood, hey, girl, hey. All right, cool. <laughs> so this is cool. In the sound effects panel, you can apply sound effects with your keyboard so that you can make them launch whenever your keyboard launches. You can also do something crazy like put it into the old stream deck so that when the stream deck is working, you can just use the stream deck to switch scenes. So like if I press this button, it takes me back to this scene. You know what I mean? So that's just kind of cool situation. So you can add down here right now. I don't have sounds in my stream deck because I use Rodecaster Pro. Cooler, but you don't have to go out and buy yourself a Roadcaster Pro because it's not necessary. So anything you put in here will basically play. Here's a trick that not a lot of folks know unless they come to the Doc Friday demo scenes. You'll notice I have a folder here, and this folder is called Stream Beats, hashtag uh, Harris Heller. These are not actually from him. These are from Epidemic Sound, hence all the ESs. But if I press play here and turn the volume down, it will play like this. So the whole entire time, this music is gonna play. But there's a catch. At the end of this song, it will go to the next song. And then the next song, and the next song, and the next song, and the next song, and the next song. So every song in this list will play in a row until it's done. But I have pressed this little gear thingy and I turned on the loopy loop. Right, so by turning that on, 
when it gets to the end, it will turn right back around and jump back up and keep going. So when I'm doing my long tutorials, my work with me tutorials, kind of like Shelly was showing you how to make uh, animated transparent overlays, you can have that just music just riding in the back. So it has a little groove to it. And then every once in a while you'd be like, oh, that's what that's for. So you can play a series of sounds in a row. And okay, like say you have an intro folder, you got your intro music, you got your, and now ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Dallas, Texas, Rich Graham. And then it goes, by the way, make sure you subscribe. You can have that as three different files, put them in the thing, tell you press one and it will go through all of them accordingly and then stop or loop again, things like that. So to play a sound directly from a video on a web page, you go to a web page. Let's come here. Um, let me make a page. E P I D E M I C sound. Let's give it a second to load. Okay, come down here to new scene and let's go to uh, this. And let's move all of these stuffs off the screen. And I don't know why epidemic sound is taking forever to load, but it's loading. Give it a second. See, it went to the next song array. I just had to stay here until that went away. But now you'll see from the indication it is on the next song. But we'll stop that right now. And then we'll let epidemic sound keep not loading. Let's try that again. Sometimes the internet does weird things. You just have to refresh the page. But anyway, whatever program you have in your computer that makes noise, you can pass it directly through the Ecamm with nothing. If it has a microphone, that could generate a different problem. We're going to just try to reload that all together again or I'll pick a different audio source. Um, I know what I'll do, E and V A T O elements. That might be easier because epidemic sound is being dumb at the moment, but let's go to royalty free audio tracks because I know I won't get in trouble and we'll just play this song. That's it. Audio All you do, jungle. oh God, that's why I didn't do it. Because every fight, Audio Jungle, shut up. I'm trying to preview a track. Why do you keep saying Audio Jungle, Audio Jungle? If you're worried about people stealing your stuff, then uh, I don't know. Don't make stealable stuff. I don't know. That didn't make sense. Anyway, I can't stand them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, in your file menu up here, there is a thing that says install system audio. Mine currently says uninstall system audio, which I'm not going to do right now because it'd be really stupid when you're live. But because I have system audio installed, any audio that the system can play, it knows how to play because it's just what it's default. Like it's really not a lot to do. Now you want to behave. Okay. So let's play something like, uh, that's just, no, that's going to be noisy. Let's play this. So, in, in theory, don't play trap music in the middle of your sessions. Okay, watch this. I'm going to turn this down. So, in theory, you could have epidemic sounds running in the background. I'm going to turn the volume here down just a taste. I'm going to put this at the end. And when this guy is done, it will just jump to the next song. So in theory, you can just have your epidemic sounds running in the back. I don't do that. I find it ignorant to be playing something from the net while you're streaming, wondering why your stream might become glitchy. I, my system right now is like hella fast, so it can kind of like keep up. But let me do this for a second. It should play the next song automatically. See, automatically. So you can go to like epidemic sounds and come over here and do something crazy like lo-fi. And then that's why well, I'm on lo-fi Christmas music. What in the exact heck is that? Anyway, press lo-fi ocean waves, you know, because Hawaii. And then you could just have this playing in the background, like really, really low. 
behind you. But again, I would suggest don't be lazy. Take the time, download all of the files, put them in Ecamm inside a folder like such and let the folder run because playing it live directly, as you saw, just trying to load Epidemic a second ago could just jack up your whole stream. So don't be lazy. Just download what you need, put them all in the folder, press the gear, press loop, press play on the folder. You can't press play on an individual file. You have to press play on the folder and then let the folder do its thing and they will just play music behind you the whole time. Nice, quiet, boom clap music. Yeah, man. So that's it. So that's the sound panel in general. Um, what else can you do in here? You, If you need to uh, check a sound, you want to know like how long it is, you can click on the sound and then drag it out to the desktop. It will come here, hit the space bar real quick. So you can see how long it is, it's 312. And then I can put it back or I can delete it now because I know how long it is. And that's how I set my clock, gang. I just, I just let you guys in on the super secret squirrel stuff. If I'm like, I'm gonna play this song for my clock and I don't remember how long the song is, I literally drag it to the desktop I come over here, I press this, it tells me it's 331. I go set my timer for 331. Okay, so now we did that. Watch this. I'm gonna move this out the way. I'm gonna come to my in oh you know what maybe even play the movie that's my secret sauce to remembering what uh how long the song is from my countdowns i just use one song not a set particular time i use one song when that song is over countdown pal that is it that's my secret sauce <laughs> hey today is half miss shut the front door are you sure ptv i do know that half a year day is july 2nd and from July 2nd is the beginning of the next half of the year as a perfect, uh, actually, I guess it would be July 2nd at 12 <laughs> in order to be exactly a half a year, but that's semantics. Let's move on. Hi. Hi. I, I was saying hi to Heather because she came to bother us. What's up, Heather? How are you doing? Do, 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 do. All right, cool. So we covered that. The next thing we're going to cover real quick is comments. Um, as you guys can see, I have been pulling comments from down here. I could come to the bottom here and hit a Q and nobody asked the question like that today, even though that's the rules. So I can do Q U E S just to check. And then uh, it says, Hey, good question. So then it says that Howard asked a question and I don't remember Howard asking a question. So now I'm going to do that. And oh, there's the question. See, I don't know it's a question because you didn't put the Q in the front, which is streamer etiquette, people. Let's do it. Remember, anyway. Um, uh, I, I, if I knew, I couldn't tell you. I could only say soon. It's just the way software developers work. It's safer that way. Be patient, grasshopper. I, I, I don't even know if I should say it's coming, but yeah. We know about it. It's being worked on. It will be ready quite soon. Oh, there's Rich. He did put a cue. I, I just put the colon. He didn't put the colon. See, there you go. All right. But yeah, that is a good question, by the way. That is a good question. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I know. I forget. It always do that whenever you're doing the demo. It drives me crazy. What I was trying to say, I'll come back over here. What I was trying to say is when I'm in this scene, you'll notice that the sound is attached. And what I did was I changed this timer to match the song because we figured out that the song was 331. And then the last thing I said, so next week when you come, this is the song you'll hear in the waiting room because I'm not gonna change it now that I've said it. <laughs> Cause then I don't have to remember to do it next Friday. That's what I said. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, that is one of the cool things. It, it's helpful and it drives me batty, but it is designed to, when you play a movie, to go and delete, I mean, not delete, to mute the sound 
to make it so that you're not trying to talk over the movie. There is a preference you can set to say, do not automatically mute. But if you want to know that, watch the video, what I put out today about preferences. <laughs> Wrong one. This one. There you go. See, if you want to know how to do that, then come and do that. And then you'll know how to do that. Why you want to go and do that? Uh huh. Okay. I didn't know that today was half missed. That's crazy. Um, why, why didn't they, why didn't they what? Oh, put the cue in the front. <laughs> uh, duh, duh, duh. Um, if the buffering comes from the, uh, man, I can't speak English today. Buffering comes from your internet service to your house is losing packets. Normally that's just the case. If I check YouTube real quick, YouTube lets me know. I don't, there is no um, stream dipping here. So it's your internet company doing something goofy. But gang, just I'll show you just so that you know when it's your turn to be a streamer. If you come over here and you look at YouTube, if you leave this window open, studio.youtube.com, it will show you what's going on in your stream. And it says right here, excellent party time, excellent. And then I can go here and it shows Everything is looking schmood. And then I can see when people are typing or doing something crazy. So right here, it tells me that the stream is doing good. No troubles there. So yeah, it's just internet. It's Friday. You know, people home, kids summertime. They got nothing to do but play video games, ruining the internet for everyone. What's up, Parker? Good to see you here. Sorry. Sorry. I know. Sorry, Caleb. <laughs> Okay, I love the timer feature. I use that feature and then it moves to the next scene. Yes, so that is exactly what I did too. On my intro scene, I have it set that when the countdown hits bottom, it goes to play the Ecamm intro thingy and then you guys see me pop up on screen going, yeah, so that, that's cool. So the other thing I want to show you guys about the comment window, on YouTube, I could actually comment directly in here. Uh, Facebook doesn't allow it, even if I can't type right. And you're probably seeing both myself typing and Caleb typing. I can't do both. I'm normally not that fast. But you can comment back in YouTube. You can use this search box to find something very particular. Say we wanted to check on any questions about music, I could do that. If I want to check on any questions about microphones, I can do that. And of course, I'm just getting Michael. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can do lots of cool things like that by typing in the comments over here. I'll show you real quick. I'll press the star on Aubrey. I'll press the star on Anna. If I come over to favorites, I can see their comments. Once I display the comment, I can come in, remove the star and it gets to the next. So this comes in handy when you're doing the type of thing where you don't stop to ask questions in the middle or stop to answer questions in the middle, but you want to go ahead and pick the ones that are good. Like these are dope questions. Let me keep them come into your comment box, click on favorites. Then you'll remember to go through and polish those guys off. And then when you, and then they're all gone, then you can say, well, no more questions. That's cool. Now the last thing, which is kind of cool. I like it. I think it's fun. Look here. You'll see there's a teeny little 17 just right there. And then when you think about it, you're like, wait, there's 30 people watching, but only 17 people press the like button. It's just, it's just kind of rude. It's a little bit rude, gang. It hurt my feelings. So when someone pressed the like button, then this would go, and the thing would jump out, and it will start to, and then you'll see like thingies popping out. So that's what happens. There you go. There's one. Somebody did it, made my feelings better. My lucky number is 22, so keep pushing. I'm just saying. I think you can reply on Facebook, but only when you're in a business or personal page. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense because we're always into the group. So that makes absolute sense. Yes. Yes. I, I knew it was Caleb. I could tell by the certain amount of sass in the comments. <laughs> I'm teasing. If you guys don't know Caleb, Caleb is the bomb. He's in our marketing squad. And he is the person who put the lovely hats together. These hats are so dope. I get tons of comments on the nice hat. And somebody pressed 
thumbs down. How swank. That must have been Anna. She did it. I can tell. Anyway, so there's that. Uh, let's come through. And that's the comments window in general. Again, one more thing to point out about comments. When you first get yours, it might look something like this because Ken and Glenn, they got good eyesight. I don't. So I pulled it out to make my hugeified because if it's hugeified, then I can see good or well. Don't. Sorry. Sorry, Miss Goldstein. I forgot English class. <laughs> so now over here. <laughs> Don't you come from my Caleb. <laughs> Thanks, you, Shelly. Hey, Caleb is my um, my spirit animal. Full, full jeans, yes, I know. Why you, perate, mira, why are you telling me that? Okay, so this window here, we're going to show you real quick. When Jan was talking about popping things out of the program window, he was speaking of this window right here. So this window shows up. When you come down here and you look at the very bottom, it says program window. You can also press command shift zero like that. That makes the window pop up. The reason why you want to have the program window open is whatever you see in this window is what the world sees. And this is important. If you come over here and you press the little pencil for preview mode, and then you want to make changes that no one can see. So if I come over here and I press this and I do my big text again, it's fantastic. Kyle, stop trying to add things to my calendar. Okay. Let's say I press this again, come over hit my little thingy thing. Give it one of these, press the emoji, give it one of those. And then come over here and press this emoji and give it one of those. And then press the emoji one more time and give it one of these. And then I add this, you guys don't see nada because I'm in preview mode. So I can add the background because, hey, you got to add the background so folks can see. I got it here. None of you guys would see this if I'm in this mode like such. Come on, keyboard. Keep up. Uh, I'm going to do it this way. So if I'm in this mode like this, you see nothing. It just looks plain. But then when I press publish, you can see it, right? So that is the advantage of preview mode. It will allow you to make some changes on the fly that no one can see until you press publish. So that means that way you can monitor what you're doing back here, but this is only what the public sees until you press publish. So that is one of the cool things about preview mode. Also remember, look up here. There's a little yellow guy it says preview mode over here. It says live. So that's your reminder that you did something dumb. Even if I remove the Aloha and say, thank you to Elaine. We don't get to see Elaine's comment until I press publish. So you have to remember to dip out of preview mode when you are done. Otherwise you might very well be talking to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's super funny yes the thumb down went away but it wasn't Anna okay Anna are you going to be building blocks or are you going to be unofficially unofficial because it's <laughs> your doppelgangerness no that's not right uh split per no that's not right schizophrenia there you go is um <laughs> is making me cuckoo anyway next maneuver this is our interview section this is cool if someone were to call in to be a guest on the show Graham I copy this, I send them a link, they get the link, they call into the show, they show up. And Little Forest Trees is here, good to see you. I didn't know you were lurking, thank you for being here. So if someone calls into the showgram, they pop up there, and then I can do various things with them in this guest window. All of my adjustments, the naming, the titling, um, helping them with their camera, zooming and patting them around, that all exist inside this little thing. Caleb. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> there's a difference between hugeify and embiggen. Embiggen is when you make it bigger. Hugeify is, yeah, the same. Never mind, Rich. <laughs> Sorry, Rich. What do you want from me? I woke up at 3 o'clock to be on Rob's stream. 3 o'clock, 8 
M. Yes, because Rob said, and we love Rob, buddy. So that's what happened. All right. Now, the next window over here is your camera effects. This is where people have fun. If you are into these sort of blue screen type things, you can do things like this. I don't have a green screen. I don't like messing with that stuff, but this is where you do it. This is where you do green. There's nothing green back there. Maybe it's making holes in my hat. You know, if I had something green. Here, let's try this. Green bubble wrap. That is super creepy, but yes, you can do very weird things with green bubble wrap. It's like, watch my hand disappear. Woo! <laughs> that is just pure insanity. Um, you can have a slightly disappearing Ninja Turtle. <laughs> so, yes, if you have green screen, you can do all kinds of cool things with the green screen settings. Fade, you can even make it so that it's transparent. And what that means is that whatever is in the background of your scene, like say I put my Ecamm logo one back on and then get this bubble wrap stuff again, you should see whatever is behind. You see? So... I guess you have to bulk it up so that it's green. But you guys remember that that scene I made in the background back there? Like if I, let me turn this one off and I'll put the Ecamm one on. There you go. Ecamm logo right there. I just gave you guys some kind of weird idea to do something. Oh, Caleb, are you one of those people that don't like when people pop bubble wrap because it makes that sound? Ooh. I know how to get you. <laughs> so, yes, you can do weird stuff. Um, I'm not a fan of green screen. I don't play with that, but you can. Now, let me show you some more stuff. You can come over here under zoom and pan, and it would allow you to zoom in. You can be like, hey. So, this is normal size head, dock size head, full gin side head. See, you can do different size heads. When you use the zoom in pan too, you can also use that to help you move around so you can put yourself in the right spots accordingly. Uh, this comes in handy when you bring a guest on and your guest isn't framed properly because, you know, they're doing that too much headroom thing. You can adjust a little bit in order to make it fit better. So that's things you can do there. Um, you do have ability to adjust your brightness and settings. This is more for the webcam people. People, if you're using a mirrorless or a, DS, a DSLR, um, just set your camera properly. <laughs> just saying. Because messing with the brightness settings, if your camera is actually set wrong, will send you down a path that will take you forever to try to get it right, and it'll probably drive you cuckoo. Uh, you can do temperatures, like, you know, get a little quick spray tan, or go in there and, you know, you can make adjustments accordingly if your rosacea is acting up. Uh, you can adjust the tint, go more pink or go more magenta. This comes in handy if you have a janky capture card that comes with a slight tint to it. You can adjust accordingly. You can adjust your saturation. Like I just want to do like Instagram filter look or you can go super bright, super plastic. Like you want to look like Dean Reynolds, crank your saturation all the way up. And then you can mess with gamma. Most people don't need to mess with gamma. And then last but not least, you could have various LUTs on your camera. Because I shoot in the flat profile and that kind of freaks people out, I have a camera correction LUT to kind of level it off and make it sort of simple, right? So there's that. And you got your mirror, just in case you're using virtual camera and a program that does not wish to behave itself. You can flip the script like that. You can also go black and white in case you're doing a film noir session. And you can rotate the camera 180 degrees in case you are trying to be Batman. And deinterlace, we don't really use this anymore. That was for older cameras. And the other thing you can do is select the camera that you want to always show up when you press camera and press default camera. Ta -da! Let me check on you folks here in the, the comments. And dun, dun, dun. he said, be careful with that. Uh, makes make sure to watch my invisible paper video in the Facebook group. Okay, yeah. 
<laughs> Wait, then you're gonna be trying to use that trick for some uh some magic stuff. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? All right, there you go. Eight plus. Yeah, me too. I got the size eight Malone. Viget, Eric, Viget, bro, you came late. Gang, that was another fast run through of everything in the ECAM program, pressed all the buttons, showed you all the things. If you have questions, don't forget, you can drop them in the comments later. You could also just send us an email. You can reach Caleb and I at marketing at ecamm.com. Or if you want to send something directly to support, you can send it over to support desk at ecamm.com. One other last thing to show you inside the app, press on help, help. Right there, it says contact support. Mine's not highlighted right now because, well, I'm live. But when you're not live, you can press that, and then the thing will ring. And then Meg or Midori or Tyler or Mike, one of them will come on and be like, hey, how can I help you? And then you can ask your question there. You can get access to all of our user guides right here from the help menu. And then you can also go to the web page and open up support. So there's a couple different ways to remind you how to get support if you ever find yourself stuck. And of course, there's lots and lots of fun things happening in the community. And Sammy, yeah, that was kind of fast. We only went 14 minutes over today um, because of goofing around. I blame Yen for asking me cool questions about color pickers. So I'll blame him for now in the invisible paper. <laughs> So we'll be back next week to do it one more again. Thank you guys so much for coming to hang out. And whew, that was fast. Don't forget to check out the video that is up right now. It will walk you through all of your preferences. I tell you people, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I find me personally, I find when I open any new program, regardless of what it is, I tend to go in preferences first. Because inside the preferences, you'll learn lots and lots of settings that will probably help you learn the program faster than you think. So I don't think a lot of people know that or even know that there's things in preferences. And it's funny because every day in the community, and now you guys watch the whole demo, you'll know stuff that they don't know. But every day in the community, somebody will say, well, I didn't know Ecamm could do that. Had they looked in preferences first, they would have known because it's actually in there, right? So I find personally, whenever I get any program, if I was to download a program today about how to build an Adirondack chair for the Mac, the first thing I would do is open up preferences and look in there and see, you know, wood choices or something. So that's a good place. That's why we made the video today. It's up on the channel. And then also last thing to remember is coming up for you Wednesday, we are doing a Ecamm Live Masterclass, three levels of microphone with iRig. So I'm going to make the post for that in about five minutes and then make sure you lock that in your calendars. It will start the same time as every Friday, 8 a.m. my time, 11 Kevin time and two Caleb time. <laughs> so that's uh, Hawaii and then East Coast and then West Coast, uh, then worldwide. East Coast, West Coast and worldwide. Sorry, I'm having one of my music Tourette's things again. Thank you, Yen. It was pretty awesome. Man, stay when I there. There you go. Thank you. Thanks for coming through. That was fun. Thank you, Building Blocks team, Adam Fulgens, for being here. Guys, if you want to learn more about that text box stuff, Yen, follow them. They murder it. It's so, so good. Like, the things that they do with their show on Mondays, freaking incredible, quite mind-blowing. Make sure you go and check that out. And then let's play some Go away music. Let's see. What are we going to play? Let's play this. And then crank it back up. Aloha, gang. Honey, honey, I got what I 